Hey guys, it's Mr. Bison here, and I'm going to be talking to you about some exam tips and exam techniques today. So why should you listen to me? Well, I have been an A-level maths and further maths teacher for the last 10 years. And also over the last few years, I've actually been doing a graduate course in some maths. And in my last four exams, I actually averaged 98%. So I know what I'm talking about here. So I'm going to give you these 10 tips. Tip number one, attempt everything. Every single part of that exam paper needs to have something that has been answered on it. Sometimes when part B or part C relies on an answer to part A, it might make you think you can't do it. Guess part A, write down what your guess is, and then just continue with the question using that number. You should gather most of the marks. Some mark schemes will even give you full marks if you've used an incorrect thing that's earlier on. Leaving it blank, you guarantee yourself getting zero. My second tip is to bail and then return. If you're spending like five, 10 minutes on a one mark question, you need to bail on that question, put a star next to it. And if you have time at the end of it, you can come back. Um, lots of the time people run out of, of time in the exam and that's not a very good strategy because you're not gonna even access marks right at the end. Number three though, if you don't run out of time and you actually have some spare time, what should you do? Well, I wouldn't recommend just glancing at your work and seeing if it looks reasonable. Instead, I would pick out a couple of questions where you think the calculations could have gone wrong and I would redo those questions. Humans are much better at spotting the difference between two things rather than just trying to look at one and find out if there are any mistakes. So redo any questions if you have time. The fourth thing I would say is an initial look. Personally, I like to flick through the exam at the beginning and see what kind of things I'll be up against. If there's something that looks a bit weird or unfamiliar, it gives my brain some time to process what I might be able to do for that question. Number five is to simplify and extract. Sometimes a question is gonna look quite dense. What you need to try and figure out is what's even going on there. Underlining key facts, and trying to translate it from something that looks confusing into something that you understand. Remember, everything that's in that exam paper is something that you have studied. How can you link that question to something that you know? Um, when I say extract, for mechanics, this is particularly important. You have a big body of text in the question. Often you just need some key values that comes from there. I like to write those out separately so that I don't have to keep looking at that big body of text again. The sixth one is to recognise and strategize. Recognise what it is that actually needs to be done to answer that question and then strategize to say what are the steps you're going to take. This is particularly applicable if a question is six, seven or eight marks, even bigger than that, where you just want to have a list of the things to do. A student, of my, a student in my class taught me that they like to do that. I think it's an excellent tip. At the end, make sure you reread the question, that you've definitely answered it in the way that it wanted, to the right number of decimal places. Have you actually got the coordinate if that's what they're looking for? Number seven is formula book. The formula book has got some really good things in there, so be familiar with it and make sure that you know where to find things. I've got these memory pages that I've created with everything you need to memorise videos that go alongside it, and I clearly indicate there what's in the formula book and what isn't which leads me on to number eight, which is the tricky formulae. If there are some formulae that you just can't get into your head that are not in the formula book, look at them just before you're going in the exam. As soon as you open that paper, write down all of those things that you've just memorized before you've gone in, and then you can forget about them. You've got them there on the piece of paper ready to use if you need them. Number nine is calculators. I like to have two calculators. I like using my graphics calculator that I've got here, and I actually still use this one that I've had from years ago. I just find it easier to have two screens so that I can use them together. A couple of obvious, thing, of, a couple of obvious things here. This one, make sure your batteries are charged. Both of them, make sure you know how to switch between the different modes. I'm mostly thinking of degrees and radians here. This kind of one, or the class whiz calculator, if there is ever a simultaneous equation or a polynomial, you must make sure that you know how to do that on here. It is a big, big time saver. Also questions like integration or series or matrices that are in further maths, your calculator can do these things. So it's great to check the answers, um, particularly things with integration and limits. You can check if you've got the right answer. Obviously you do need to show all your working for any integration. And then number 10, which is probably the most important one, after you've closed that exam, you just need to move on and forget about it. There's always gonna be another paper 
or it will be the end of your exam season and you can finally have a break. So those are my top 10 tips of how you should be approaching your maths exams. I'm wishing you the best of luck for your exams as they come up and I hope that they go really well for you. If you're finding yourself getting stuck on anything in maths, I have got hundreds of videos that will help you to go through uh, exercises that maybe you don't understand or also some things about what you need to memorise for different areas. Good luck! If you found that video helpful, consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. I've also put in the description how you can find the Everything You Need to Memorise videos.